Hello friend, today I wanted to share a bunch of helpful tips when using the color page in DaVinci Resolve. When I first switched to Resolve, the color page felt pretty intimidating. Some controls are pretty straightforward and other controls are a little bit more hidden. I definitely can't take credit for discovering all of these tips myself as I've learned them from friends and other people here on YouTube, but I thought it would be helpful to just compile them into one simple video in hopes that at least one of them would be helpful to you. While this video is geared towards those who are somewhat new to Resolve, I hope that one or two of the tips today would be helpful to someone who has used Resolve for a little while. Okay, so now we are in DaVinci Resolve. I'm in DaVinci Resolve Studio 18, and I went ahead and pulled in some footage. All of this is ungraded just from a trip that we're gonna use for this project. And so our first tip is gonna save you guys a bunch of time when setting up your note tree so you don't have to do it from scratch every time. So. We've got this clip here. If we were to build out a little node tree, let's add a few nodes. Let's maybe call this one LUT. And if you guys are like me, you might have a LUT that you regularly use. So let's go ahead and throw on my Meadow standard LUT A. That looks great. And I typically would do something like this. I would name these nodes if there were any corrections that I needed to make. So to my highlights, or my primaries. And then the other thing that I add to a bunch of my footage is my meadow film effects. So if you guys come down here, we're going to add this. And this just adds subtle effect to my footage. So this is sort of my starting place for all my color grading. And so to save time, so I don't have to set that up every time, we're gonna come over here to gallery. And if you guys see over here, these are our power grade groups. And so we're gonna navigate up to our power grades folder. Power grades are saved across all of your projects. So it doesn't matter what project you're in, you can access any presets that you save. And so now that we're in power grades, we're just going to right click on our image here and say grab still. And let's call this node tree. So then let's say we were opening up a new project and we were about to color grade some footage and we were here rather than creating all of our nodes from scratch again we can just simply come up here to our power grades and hit apply grade and then we have our node tree set up so then you can make any corrections if you needed to change anything super simple but your node tree is good to go okay so for our next tip we are going to look at using memories to save color grades so we're going to come up to keyboard customization and this is something that I love to set up on Resolve and so we are going to navigate to the color page scroll down to memories and you guys will see how I have these set up so I have option 1 through 8 on my keyboard set up to save memories and then I have command 1 through 8 set up to load memories and I will show you guys what this looks like this isn't set up by default, so you will need to come in here and click on each one and then put in the keystroke of command one, command two. And I do believe that these are set to something else when you originally get resolve. I'm sorry that I can't remember exactly what that is, but you will need to check if there are any duplicates. It'll give you a little error and you just need to unassign what was previously assigned to the option and command keys in case you guys are running into any issues. So. We're gonna go ahead, cause I already have it set up and go back. And so right now, if we press option one, this now saves this color grade to our memory. And so let's go to this clip and let's say this one needs a little bit of a tweak. So we're gonna cool it off a little bit and then increase our offset just to give some exposure. So then on this one, I'm gonna select option two. So now when we come to this clip, if I do command one, it's gonna paste our memory saved in bank A. And then if I do two, here's that memory. So guys, I will do this for a lot of different color grades in my scene, and I'll be able to go through if there's consistently some clips that I need to tweak the white balance or um, the exposure, like indoors at a wedding versus outdoors. I'll just save you know, outdoors at a wedding to option one. I'll save indoors at the wedding to option two. I'll save portrait footage to option three. And then I can really quickly 
just go command one, two, or three to paste different grades. So I use this all the time. It's kind of my go-to method for copy and pasting color grades rather than using the gallery tab and doing the apply grade feature. Okay, so our next tip is pretty simple, but it deals with just copy and pasting one node. So let's say we decrease our highlights here and maybe bring down our midtone detail just to make it a little softer. Let's say we want to apply this to another clip. We're gonna click on the highlight node and then hit Command C. Then we can navigate to another clip and you guys will see here, we click on this first node and then hit Command V. It's just going to paste that one node. So you can really quickly go through, make any adjustments you need to individual clips and you are good to go. So I mainly use this if I made a particular setting tweak on one clip and I wanna go apply it to the rest. Simply just click on the node, navigate over, and then Command V and paste it to the previous clip. The next tip is gonna deal with power grid groups. So if we open up our gallery again, we do have this folder by default called power grades that are accessible in any project. But you guys will see down below, I have all these additional ones and these are all custom ones that I've made that I can access through any project. So if we right click in this open area, you guys will see add power grade album. So it adds a blank one and then we can just give this a name. So let's call this test. And now if we save a still to this particular group, keeps it organized for us. So I have some set up for all my Meadow products. I have some crazy ones that I use for visuals, one for my talking head for YouTube, and again, just node trees that I can load by default. And so these are a really great way to keep these organized because as I add stuff into the Power Grades bin, it just clogs up pretty quick. And so I definitely create some additional ones that I can store grades in for later. Okay, for our next clip, we are talking about stabilization. So we're gonna go back to the edit page real quick and click on this clip here. Let's say we have to stabilize it because it's a little shaky. We will click that and if we play it, you guys will now see that it is stabilized. But let's say we move on to color grading and we're grading our clips. Let's say we, you know, like where this is at, we're gonna do option one, like we talked about earlier, and then command one. So as I paste it, you saw that it zoomed out. And now if I play this back, we actually lost our stabilization settings. So this is something that I didn't understand at first and I wish Resolve would make this a little bit easier where stabilization is not dealt with in the color page. But the way to do this is actually to come down here into our keyframes, navigate to color. And if we switch this to color now, when we copy and paste, we're only dealing with color attributes, not sizing. And so if we do this again, go back here, we'll stabilize it. Let's say we undo this grade, come here, we copy this grade. Now when we paste it, you guys will see that our clip remains stabilized. And so I did not understand that at first, but I hope it would help you if you have been doing stabilization and for some reason it keeps getting undone because that's super annoying to have to um, go back and reset it each time. So whenever I'm dealing with stabilization for my project, I just come in here and flip this to color. Okay, so our next tip has to do with power windows. So this grade looks great, but let's say we wanted to make this shot a little bit more dramatic. We're going to add a node and call this vignette. Come to our power windows, let's create a nice soft circle here in the middle and we come here and bring our gain down you guys will see that immediately this is affecting the middle of our image that's not what we want so we're going to flip it so now you will see that it kind of highlights our subject in the middle and let's say we don't want it that dramatic um, but maybe something about there looks quite good so just a little bit kind of drawing your eye more to the center and so let's say you didn't want to have to set this up every time where you create the power window and then go in and you know change the size and stuff. If you come down here to your power windows, up here to the three dots, you can actually do save new preset. So let's call this darken edges. 
So now if we navigate over to this clip and we were to do the same thing, we're gonna add a node, come to our power grades, and instead of clicking on a circle, we're just gonna come here and do darken edges. You will see it get created, and then we can go right to our gain and bring it down. So just a little bit of a speedy workflow tip when dealing with power windows, because I feel like I'm always creating them from scratch. Our next tip is pretty quick, but it has to do with working with LUTs or effects. And so let's say, you know, we kind of paste this on and to your eye, the LUT is just, you know, a little more dramatic than you would hope. If you wanted to decrease the strength of that, you're just gonna click on LUT, come over here, click here on our key, and then key output. You can go ahead and bring this down to adjust the intensity of your LUT. So one would be full strength, and maybe you bring this down 2.8. The other scenario that I would use this is with effects. And so let's say I really softened this up, went up to my glow, you know, made this really dramatic where, you know, made this really glowy, but then let's say on this clip, that's a little intense. You can just also come to this node here and again, change the intensity of it to kind of blend it in. So you can set this to 0.6. And just as a quick way on an individual clip level to just adjust the intensity of the notes. The next tip has to do with just identifying certain colors in your scene down here on your waveform. And so if we hover over this, you see it's doing nothing, but we can go to our qualifier we come down here to our three dots and do display qualifier focus. If we now hover over the skin, you guys will actually see down here on the waveform where that is sitting. So this is super helpful if you're just curious kind of what different parts of your image are looking like and what values are actually showing up. You can do it with tree whites so you can see really easily that maybe this white is a little bit cool so you can warm it up. And this also worked on the vector scope so if you hover over your skin you see your skin tone line you can also kind of see how your skin is sitting and make adjustments really easily for our second to last tip we're just going to look at different ways of adding grain and so the traditional way before i was in resolve that i added film grain to projects was i had overlays so let's say i had something like this i would drag it on and change our composite mode to overlay and this would really quickly give me grain i could adjust the opacity um, and then you would have to duplicate this slowly over your whole timeline just a little slow but this is the way that i did it in premiere and you know it was pretty good but i do want to show you guys just kind of my preferred way of doing it now so we'll go ahead and just mute this go back to our color page the probably most common way people do it in Resolve is adding a node, calling it grain. Let's go up here to film grain, drop it on. And I'm gonna really quickly just bring up the intensity of it. So it's a little more pronounced. And so yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, the reason why I typically don't do it this way is let's say I've copy and pasted this to a bunch of nodes. And let's say I decide when I'm done with my edit that this is too strong, then I'm gonna have to come in here, change my opacity, and then go back and paste this to every single clip. And if you guys have changed your grade, you know, on individual clips to color correct, all of that is gonna get overwritten as you paste. So the way that I like to do this, we're gonna delete these grain nodes real quick and the way that i now like to do this is just coming up to timeline and adding a node go ahead and connect this and then let's drop our film grain here we'll do the same thing just bring up the intensity of it so now this is on our timeline level so if we go back to clip level, you guys will see it not down here, but now our grain is being applied to all of the clips evenly. And so if I am wanting to use DaVinci Resolve's built-in film grain plugin, this is the way that I like to do it. And you can simply toggle it on and off 
if it's slowing down your system, you can just turn it off while you grade and then flick it back on before you export. Okay, and for our last tip, we are looking at muting timeline layers in the color page. And so let's just say in this project that we were using this grain overlay. So we've got this over top our footage. And then let's say we wanted to use some type of letterboxing and let's say it was going to change throughout. So we've got 255 and then we were going to something like this. Um, but when we move over to the color page to start color grading these, if we open up our clips, you will see that whatever is on top is selected. So the grain and then we also have our little mat here. And so if we're trying to copy and paste or, you know, this is what's getting graded and we want to be grading the clips. And so it's quite annoying to come in here and have to click on each one. And so the easy workaround for this is just to come up to timeline and it will show you your different layers here. So you've got V1, V2, V3. We know our grains on V2 and our mats are on V3. So if we actually hold option, we can click on V3 and V2 and they actually disappear from our clips bin. So now as we cycle through our clips with the arrow keys, we are just going to be grading these clips, but you guys will see that the mats and the grain are still viewable in your viewer. The other way of doing this would be to simply not hold option and just click on V3, V2, but then as you guys see, they are what's visible. And our clips but now our grain and our mats are gone and so my favorite way is just to use the option click method that way you can preview everything as it's going to look in your final edit as you color grade and it makes cycling through your clips go so much faster so yeah guys definitely use timeline mutes to just mute specific layers if you guys are working with yeah stacks of different layers of footage Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found these tips and techniques helpful. Let me know your thoughts about any of them and if any of them actually came as a surprise to you. I'd also love to hear any tips or techniques you use on the color page on a regular basis for your workflow. So let me know down in the comments and hopefully other people can learn from you as well. Thanks again for being here and until next time, peace.